Have you always wanted to invest in real estate and flip houses like you see on TV, but maybe you don't have a ton of money or you don't have the best credit? Well, keep watching as I show you exactly how I invested in real estate and how you too can flip houses with no money and no credit. This is the no money down, no credit strategy to investing in real estate. Hey guys, Dara here, real estate investor and entrepreneur out of Atlanta, Georgia. I'm going to be talking about how money or the lack thereof is not an excuse when it comes to investing in real estate or being able to invest in real estate. I am a walking, living, breathing example of how this is so. So I'm going to jump right into it and tell you guys a story as well as share some advice on how you too can invest in real estate if you truly, truly want to, if you truly want to put in the work. Um, you can invest in real estate with no money. You can invest in real estate with bad credit and a lot of other different ways to invest in real estate besides just having to knock on the bank store and say, hey, can I get a loan? Hey, can I get a mortgage? Blah, blah, blah. So getting right into it. So I acquired a property. Um, with a creative method known as subject to. So what that means is I acquired the property subject to its existing mortgage. Um, and that's one of the many tools that I have in my toolkit, in my brain box <laughs> about how to acquire real estate. Um, so in this particular situation, there was a house that I found from driving around the neighborhood, also known as driving for dollars, driving it around and to be honest to this day I have no idea why this house stood out to me I have no idea why I wrote down the address or reached out to the homeowner or anything because when I look at the old pictures of the house there were no signs of what we what investors call you know telltale signs of a vacant property or a distressed property the grass wasn't high the windows and doors weren't boarded up um, aside from there being no cars or no light on in the daytime, it looked like it could be lived in. But I thank God <laughs> that this property fell into my lap somehow, that I found the owner and was able to meet with him. We built a really good rapport. Um, he was actually in the middle of renovating the property when I found him, as far as when we went to go and actually see the property. And so he's in the middle of renovating the property, so that's a plus, hey. You're almost done, we met you halfway, great. You're, you're doing the work for us. But the way we are in our business, we kind of just let them off easy. We wanted it to be a true win-win situation. So we say, you know what, Mr. Seller, don't even worry about it. We'll take it from here. And looking back, mm, <laughs> that could have been something that we're like, hey, you started to finish it. But again, we just wanted to alleviate some of his, his pain. You have to know your seller's pain points and just you are the one to help them. So we came in and we helped him. Now, the reason that we suggested the subject to option is because he had a mortgage. He had recently refinanced the property and he had a mortgage that was way over what we were going to offer him cash to buy the house outright. Um, so in this situation, he was upside down. So he owed more than what the property was worth or more than what we as investors were willing to pay for it. Um, and again, because it wasn't um, retail ready, nobody would really pay what he owed on it. So he was upside down. So instead of walking away and saying, hey, you know what, this is your problem, figure it out, fix it. Again, this is having that subject to strategy in our toolbox was very helpful in this situation. And so we proposed it to him, said, hey, Mr. Seller. We know you really want to get out of this situation. This house has been a headache for you. You had tenants who weren't paying you for months. You have damages you have to worry about. How about this? How about you deed us over the title of your property, keep the mortgage in your name, and we take over your monthly payments? And at first, it was a little confusing to him. And, you know, the way I, I was explaining it to him sounded so good. He, he literally came out of his mouth and said, well, what do you get out of it? What's in it for you? Because it just sounded so sweet. It sounded like a win. And then what? It was, he didn't think of the win-win. He was like a win for him. And what do you get out of it? And here's where I'm going to be honest. I was pretty new in real estate and as a wholesaler all i knew was here's my cash offer here's my cash offer take it i'm a low ball you blah 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 so this was literally my first time offering somebody a creative financing uh way to get acquire their property so i'm almost i'm i'm like fumbling through my spiel 
I'm like half explaining things because I'm really like, I don't want to say something wrong. And he's like, what's in it for you? And I'm like, little do you know. <laughs> but so I was able to explain it to him enough for him to on that spot right there sign on the dotted line. Yes, I will do this. Um, so one, he liked me. We built a rapport enough for him to want to do business with me. So he liked me. He trusted me. Like I said, I, I personally felt like I was fumbling through this explanation of what subject to. Hey, I'm going to take over your property. Keep the mortgage in your name. I'm going to pay it. Trust me to make those payments. Um, and you walk away. We'll fix it up. You know, don't worry about it anymore. This is not my property. So he trusted that I would actually do what I said I would do. I would not because it's still going to be on his credit whether we pay it or not. If he goes into default, that'll be on him and not necessarily us on paper, but ethically, you know, it'd be on us. But so he liked me, he trusted me, and from there he was willing to sign on the dotted line. And so that's how I acquired his property subject to the existing mortgage. And again, so we acquired it, we renovated it and got it rented out. I wanna backtrack a little bit as well, and this is where negotiating um, comes into play because there's no cut and dry way to do real estate. There's no cut and dry way to even do what I'm telling you subject to because the icing on the cake for this deal is that he owed, I think at the time that we met him, his payoff was maybe about 120000 or so. Um, we were going to offer him 80000 and there's no way he could have done that deal um, straight out cash, which is why we did the subject to option. Now, I think his monthly payments at that time were somewhere between $800 dollars $900 a month. And so we were able to negotiate some awesome terms for ourselves, yes, but it was still a win-win because he went for it. He wanted it. We didn't pull his arm, twist his arm, and force him to do this strategy. He was just that motivated that he went with what we negotiated. And what we negotiated was out of his, I want to say, let's say 900 for round numbers, out of his $900 a month mortgage payment, we agreed that my company would pay $600 of that $900. So he's still in there. He still has some skin in the game. He still has to cover the difference. And over the, the term that we've been under contract with him, Thus far, the mortgage monthly payments have gone up, but we're still locked in at our 600, so he has had to come up just a little bit on his um, portion. So it's probably like roughly two thirds, one third split of the monthly payment. So again, that was a negotiation strategy. And I wanna shout out one of my investor friends because it was him who actually did the negotiation on that part. Steven Watson, thank you so much, brother, for that. So he's the one who negotiated with the homeowner for us to say, hey, they're only going to pay $600 a month. Um, you know, you got to come out with the rest. But again, we have so many different terms and negotiations in our contract that, again, it did turn out to be a win-win. We have it under contract for a very long time. And that's what you want to do. You want to buy yourself time when it comes to creative financing, owner financing, um, depending on the deal. Because again, nothing's cut and dry, nothing's black and white, and it all depends on your strategy, your goals for this particular property. Um, we did acquire it subject to, and our exit strategy was to rent it out. We rented it out for a year and then turned it into short-term rentals. So we had a lot of different, we wanted to do rent to own with it. We wanted to do whatever. So it turned out to be a pretty sweet deal on our end. Seller's happy, we're happy, and it was a win-win situation. So again, just to reiterate, for this particular video, um, I specified how you can acquire property with no money, not having to borrow from the bank because in this situation, there was already a bank involved, yes. There was already a mortgage in place, yes. But I didn't have to ask the bank um, to borrow any money to acquire this property. I didn't have to get my credit looked at or anything. Um, so there is a bank involved technically, but that's how the seller acquired the property. That's not how I acquired the property. So subject to is a creative financing way to acquire property. Um, again, it's not cut and dry in our particular situation, how we negotiated it. At the closing table, the only thing we paid was the attorney closing costs, the fees for the attorney to, hey, this is the title from you to you. We didn't pay the seller anything at the closing table because he, he didn't want anything. We gave him exactly what he wanted. 
It was a win-win situation. So I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, please like, comment below, and share. Thank you. Bye.